Welcome to Most Famous, where we are not. Um, today is a very special episode I've been planning for a long time. I'm very excited for it. And I'm joined by an 18 time D1 All American, a three time East League champion, a five time Southeastern Conference champion, a 20 time All SEC honoree, placed top two in long jump in the NCAA, NCAA Championship, and won gold in the heptathlon. Uh, Tyra Giddens and Donovan Spots. Thank y'all for joining me today. Of course. Thanks <laughs> yeah. for having us, man. Yeah, of course, of course. So the first question I want to ask you guys was, um, or tell yourself, what was it like growing up and um, how did you fall in love with track? I fell in love with track because, honestly, I was trying to find something that made me different, something that made me special. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, I had some, pro like, I had some, like, real promise in it, and so I stuck to it. Uh -huh. um, I don't think that was the healthiest of motivations, but <laughs> but when I did get into it, I did love the heptathlon. The heptathlon. It wasn't just track and field that I fell in love with. I fell in love with the heptathlon. Uh, could you explain what the heptathlon is? Yeah, so the heptathlon is seven events, and it's done over two days. So it's high jump, sorry, it's 100 hurdles, high jump, shot put, and then 200, and then the next day is long jump, javelin, and then the 800. And I love the complexity of it. I love that it was uh -huh. a lot of events because, like, it kept me distracted and kept me intrigued. Yeah. What was the uh, hardest event to learn? To learn javelin, to actually do the 800. The 800? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, when did you decide to come here? To Austin? Yeah. Um, well, it was right after the Olympics. It was right after Tokyo, Tokyo. What, Tokyo, Tokyo? 2020 Olympics. Mm -hmm. Um. And when I came back, uh, I was trying to figure out what was next for me. I didn't know if I wanted to sign. I didn't know if I needed to. I didn't know what to do. And so um, mm -hmm. I think the plan that was concocted uh, was to move to Austin to train at Texas with uh, the head coach, uh -huh. Flo Edrick. And so that's that was why we moved to Austin. That's great. And then um, did you break any uh, records in high school or like? Yes, I have 17 individual state titles, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so when you were in high school, you were dominating. Um, how did you decide what uh, college you wanted to go to? Or like, how did you plan your commitment out? Honestly, man, I mean, my family being from Trinidad, I didn't really know much about college. Like, uh -huh. it wasn't like, I didn't have any, my family wasn't like alum to anywhere. Oh, and God. so, like, I just saw where the best athletes went, and that was, those were my choices. Yeah, that's the, that's the best I, way to go about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best way to go about yeah. it. Smart. Yeah. And then, um, how would you um, describe your first year of track? you think it was, like, uh, more than you anticipated or less or just right? It was necessary. <laughs> um, it started off extremely difficult because in high school, I could... I could just do something and I was just winning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't, there was effort put in, but it was like the minimum. And in the college, minimum. it was like, no, you can't just work hard. You have to work smart. Right, right. And right. that's when things started to get difficult for me because I started questioning my abilities. I started, I got really nervous because I was like, wait, what if I put in work and it doesn't really play out? Like now I'm nervous. Right. And so, um, but it all actually worked out in the end. I had a pretty good ending to my freshman year. But um, it was really hard. I think that's where a lot of foundational development, like in my events, came from. Like, I, it was and then y'all met in college, right? Is that how that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So how did how did you, like y'all meet each other? Like, change things for each other? Like, how did you develop as an athlete, and then how did you develop as a person when y'all met each other? Whew. Um, I definitely had to, uh, and I mean it's like in the best way possible. Like, I like had to. I had to develop a little bit of patience uh -huh. and not because like, you know, there was anything wrong. It was more so like, I was just like Tyra and I initially, we, we were different in some aspects. Right. And so like, you know, I'm seeing this great woman, great, great. No, I'll say girl at the time. <laughs> <laughs> young woman. Right, right, right. I'm seeing this great young woman and I'm like, okay, so these, these amazing qualities uh -huh. and then there's these like, you know, slight things that, you know, I mean, just like in a relationship, you know, mm -hmm. you, you had to. See, see, see what's good, what's bad. And um, it actually ended up, for me at least, it ended up being a mirror. Like, that's what she ended up being. So, like, 
everything that I was kind of not liking about her, mm-hmm. I was doing the same, the same exact thing. thing. So right. and she was just the first person to like actually show me those things. Oh, so, okay. That right. was that was it for me. Yeah, and for me, shoot, I don't. Donovan was. I mean, I don't really know how religious I am, but Donovan if anything was proof to me that like there's a higher power <laughs> right. no seriously yeah, that's like, that's like, special. That's no, special. like i donovan came into my life at the perfect time mm-hmm. and he was exactly what one i i i needed for my development my sport but honestly like the support that he provided for me uh-huh. emotionally yeah i was in all because like i come from a large family mm-hmm. so like my family was like my best friends like that's, I, yeah. that's all i had and then here comes this guy <laughs> and he's just and he's just proven over and over to me that he's just exactly what he's always said he was that it's consistency yeah that's and for me when i was at the age that we met that was something that i don't even know if i had and so like that was huge it was huge and he showed me so much about like how to Honestly, he taught me what a mindset was and how, like how that actually works, how that concept works. Uh-huh. And that was a huge turning point in how I viewed myself as a human being in my sport. That's kind of when I started thinking, wait a minute, I am, I am, I have all my identity is in my sport. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And all he did was just ask random questions. Yeah. He didn't really do much. He wasn't trying to like, t- he didn't tell me anything. He was just like, hey, just right. have you ever thought about this? Uh-huh. And that's when some, that is when I think I started to bloom, at, like blossom as an athlete. Yeah. And speaking of blossoming, <laughs> <laughs> when you broke the collegiate record, like, could you uh, talk me through like the training you did leading up to that? And like, what were you feeling that day that made it like special? That you think? Honestly, <laughs> the, I think the biggest difference in that season and that, in those moments growing up, like leading up to that meet was our conversations really like it was because my training i can do Mm -hmm. you know i can do that but it's not just about working hard and it's about what i said working smart right and he's a smart fella so (laughs) so like he just kind of helped guide me with my emotions leading up to it because emotions is plays a big role in sports And I was able to manage my emotions so well that competition. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I get pretty nervous, yeah. especially I mean, if there's like good, com- yeah. if there's some good competition. I'm yeah. just like, you know, but I, I, I held myself together and like, I kept repeating the things that he was saying, like taking deep breaths, like things yeah. that we've been working on together. I applied in that competition and I ha- I never had so much fun in a meet. Yeah. So do you think like that's like, people are doing it wrong in a sense like they're just working hard and like trying to maximize the workouts but they don't really like put their um efforts into like a support system like some people just work too hard and they think that's all but you need some something external to take you to the next level honestly i think i can answer it from the viewpoint of an athlete um and yet my answer is yes yeah but donovan i think can answer this in a different viewpoint of being on the outside looking in. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. went through that with me. Like, how would you answer that? Like, how important do you think that is? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's massive. It's, it's almost, it's almost 50% of the equation. To yeah. Be honest. And like, at least that's my opinion of it because, um, I mean, I hate, I hate to take the caveat there, but yeah, I, I've noticed, like, I couldn't help but notice a lot of similarities between dog training and just coaching and just development as a whole. Like the process is, almost exactly the same when done properly. Uh-huh. And one thing that really stuck out to me is the the significance of emotions in the training and the learning process. Uh-huh. Like a lot of people may think, oh, I just got to get out there and work hard. And I just got to pretend that like I'm unstoppable mm-hmm. and I'm not letting anyone beat me. And it's like, if, if you really sit there and you analyze that emotion that's behind that, it's actually a negative thing. It's, it's an insecurity. It's a right, right, needing right. to be something that either you are or you're not but you're trying to prove something and it's like no don't exactly. like you should be doing this because you want to do this right. because something that you want to do is always going to outweigh something that like you just feel the need to do mm-hmm. at least that's my opinion of it so like yeah the, the support system is is necessary because you, you got to have people that are going to 
kind of keep you in check and be like, hey, like you're getting too amped up or, oh, no, you're not working hard enough. You know, just right. finding that balance. Yeah, exactly. So what do you think? Like uh, your best event is the high jump. That's what you're known for. Uh, mm-hmm. Is there anything that you think you do uh, that not a lot of athletes are doing that can make you so much better than everyone else or like gives you the edge, like a, a workout or a mental state you get in that helps you perform better? I think it's a mixture of things. Um, I think, uh, like Donovan just said, it's the biggest thing is the like your mentality uh-huh. and making learning the reward and not the outcome. Mm, okay. And so, got that from this guy. And then, <laughs> and then also, um, another thing that I think could potentially set me apart is my actual, like you don't, there's never high jumpers who long jump because right. they're so opposite, but because I can do both, that will carry into my long jump because I am able to jump a little higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and also I do have a heptathlon foundation, that, mm-hmm. and that is a very strong foundation. Um, and so, you know, uh, I do think that that sets me apart. Yeah. Um, you know, but it's just, it's whether or not it's applied. Yeah, yeah, And so I can say all these things, but it's like, you gotta do yeah, it. Yeah, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta do it. No, okay. So how much... Do you think, like, money, when it comes to track athletes, people really don't associate, like, money? Because you look at, like, the NBA and, like, you see these big deals or the uh, NFL and the big these big deals as well. Uh, how much does money play a part in, like, track athletes uh, competing or, like, going hard on certain workouts to not get hurt? Or, like, how does the money thing work in the uh, track universe? I can tell you this in, like, a short sentence. If you are not sponsored, and it doesn't need to be like with a big brand like Puma or uh-huh. you know, Adidas or Nike, if you don't have anyone helping you financially, it's almost impossible. It's almost impossible to manage because the amount that like, treatment alone, and you know, seeing your doctor, your chiro, your uh, deep tissue massage, your masseuse, like, and also your diet, uh, uh-huh. all of that add up. Um, I mean, like it's. It's a lot. Mm-hmm. And also, it's just like how much time it takes up from your day. So it's hard if you, you know, say you do have a, a sponsor, but it's just clothing, right? Mm-hmm. So you're not getting uh, you're not getting money. So you're probably going to have to get a job. Right. And it's like a part-time job, but you're already working a full-time job because training is a full-time right. job. And it's like, it's exhausting. It is exhausting. Uh-huh. It's exhausting. Is it all about like the sponsorship? Is it like performance or is it like marketing? Like to get a brand deal? Yeah, so like I, based off what I'm what I've seen, I, when you're coming straight out of college, it's you know a lot of performance. I would say seventy percent performance, mm-hmm. but they do want people who are also marketable as well. Uh-huh. Um, like I, I know that there's been a couple athletes um, who one was really really top sprinter, mm-hmm. um, but the deal that they got was you know amazing because of their marketability, mm-hmm. and they, maybe they weren't necessarily the best sprinter, but they yeah. were you know, top five, top three. That makes and sense. because they were so much more marketable, they were able to, you know, Use really secure that back. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, like, when you became, uh, obviously, a Puma athlete, how did that change? How, how did things change for you when you became a Puma athlete? So, this obviously had always been a dream of mine. Like, I was like, I'm going to be a pro athlete. Like, uh-huh. it, there was nothing in my mind stopping me. Um, and where I was uh, emotionally... At the time when it happened, I was extremely nervous because I, I was faced with the reality of they're technically telling me how much I'm worth. Mm, right, right. Like by what they're offering me, mm-hmm. this is how much you think I'm worth. And it's like, it depends. Like you can have a good, great, great year one year, mm-hmm. but if the next year isn't that great, you go down significantly and right. then they could bring you back up. Mm-hmm. And so like there was, it was, a, it was, I was really nervous. Really nervous. So, uh, like I think I expected it to be a little bit more exciting when it happened. Uh-huh. And I do think if it would have been done, if it would have been handled better, <laughs> uh, it would have been that moment that I've always dreamt of. Mm-hmm. But it, it, it wasn't. I, mean, I, I think I saw it for what it really was. It, it was exciting, but it was just like, ah, I'm a product. Right. <laughs> I, I think you should clarify that though a little bit. Because like... Um, at the 
like the actual of uh, the getting the actual contract was like it was cool it was yes. it was really good and mm-hmm. it, it was, was amazing it was difficult like her agents did an amazing an amazing job like getting all that right. stuff together oh, um typically what happens is like the top ncaa athletes like you know their senior year of the year that they're about to go pro it's like a big deal they're like oh mm-hmm. is this person going to go pro or are they not going to go pro yeah. and uh because you know she made the transfer and then they're just it wasn't the same gusto that we would have expected had she you know stayed at a and m you know what uh-huh. I mean? so i think that's kind of what you meant by yeah, yeah. but don't yeah. want to put words yeah. in mouth. no yeah. like, <laughs> i know his example his explanation was in, like exactly what i was trying to say but i didn't um like i said i had a, i have amazing agent agents uh-huh. and so like having them behind me during that whole process made it significantly better right than trying to do it on your own and that was a good segue yeah. so like what made you decide to go from a and m to ut for me i would say the biggest reason was that i knew where i was going to go was more of a uh, tech technical based uh-huh. environment um, which I was trying to develop in those areas. And I know... What do you mean by uh, technical base? Uh, just like the kind of program that is ran there. It's There's amazing sprinters. Mm-hmm. There's a, Normally, good sprinters make good long jumpers. Mm-hmm. And I had the ability to jump. I have the ability to jump. I mm-hmm. just need to add the sprinting. Right. right? And um, my coach at a and love him. Like... Because Rady is one of my favorite human beings in the world. And we both recognize that, like, he's an amazing multi-coach, but maybe in the future I would need to go find a more technical coach. Mm-hmm. And so, like, we, we knew that. And so, like, th- I figured that this was that. This is uh-huh. me breaking off finding a more technical coach for a specific event and preparing for a professional career and mm. going into the Olympic years with this coach. Um, right. And so... That was my mindset and thought process going into to Texas. Because I had graduated from a and I finished, mm-hmm. did all my stuff. Right. And so it was just like, I had an extra season be- due to like a surgery. And I was like, why not? Mm-hmm. So- okay. So um, the process, <sighs> the process was, was a little difficult it was. Uh, to, to, to say the least. It uh-huh. was extremely difficult. Um and ultimately, it was, you know, a decision based on mostly thinking about Tyra's, you know, career, her long-term career, yeah. her professional career. Yeah. Um, and now how it happened, you know, that may be... A different conversation? That, that may be a different conversation. But what I will say about that situation is that um, if there is ever any, you know, collegiate or high school athlete that is concerned about who is in their corner Mm -hmm. and who is supposedly helping them Mm -hmm. um i think they should really really not ignore the warning flags of Mm -hmm. those that say that they are actually helping them yeah yeah and um there's a lot of how do i say this you know how like sometimes like at family functions like depending on type of family you have you know like your mom would be yelling at you yeah. and then five seconds later she's opening the door and she's like telling <laughs> yeah, you know she's yeah. she's greeting people yeah, yeah. and everything's fine like that analogy of that like how that behavior happens that goes on in almost every business right. and this whole transition was really eye opening for me to really see that oh like there is the hoopla that colleges you know stir up about yeah school pride and mm-hmm. all this other stuff but when the, kind of the rubber hits the road, you realize that, oh, no, this is just a business. Yeah. At the end of the day, yeah. that, that's it. And you don't like to think that certain actors in the business um, or like in, in the team environment or on the, in the program, you don't like to think that they really view it as a business. Mm-hmm. But from what I saw, like, that's literally all it is. Right. And that was that was the biggest opportunity for growth for me mm-hmm. because I mean, when I was at A&M, like that was, that was my, like that was my first time really being alone on my own. It, it, I, I made a home in college station. Yeah. You know? I mean, as did Tyra. And so, um, so leaving that and then leaving the way that, you know, the way that it happened, um, it was, it was tough, it was but yeah, that was, that was actually really, really tough. And 
I bet a bunch of athletes come to that realization. Like, they sell you on the school and how much they love you and how much they're going to put into you. But at the end of the day, you know, if you're got, not performing, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. they yeah. have to meet a quota or yeah, yeah. there's a certain standard of things. And then, you know, a lot of feelings skirt and stuff like that. Yeah. So I also want to ask you a question. If, if y'all would have like a kid, right. And then let's say she or he had the same dream as you, they want to go to the Olympics. What would you tell them? Like what advice would you give them that you learned from your journey becoming a pro athlete? Honestly, the biggest thing I could tell them is the rewards. Like I said earlier, the reward does not come from result. It's, it comes from learning. Mm-hmm. So whatever you're doing, it's, you shouldn't get, you didn't, your motivation shouldn't be for, I want to be an Olympian. Yeah, yeah. It should be, you know what? I want to learn something today. I want to yeah. learn about this actual thing. Yeah. Because like for me, at once, like since I was seven, I was like, I'm going to the Olympics. Yeah. Like every single day of my life was dedicated to making sure that happened. And that's why like I fell into depression after. Right. Because I I didn't there was I had no like sus- sustenance so, yeah, mm. substance like after like I I felt empty. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> funny you said it cuz like I know a bunch of my friends like uh same thing with football like football they went into the league or they all they think is football. A lot of boys from like the ground up. And then like after, you know, things were shake out and like you might not have the opportunity to go to college like you don't know what you want to do afterwards yeah so like you almost have to create like a second identity after you're stopping an athlete so i feel like that should be talked about more about people who didn't make it than people who did make it you know what i mean that so i'm just gonna speak very freely here yeah. that is something that i absolutely hate about the current ncaa system yeah right. is that you have these so once again because it is a business you have all the motivation for certain people in the program to get the most out of the athletes. Uh-huh. Okay. Because you get the most out of the athletes, the athletes, now they get NIL money, but the school gets bonuses, the coaches get bonuses, so on and so mm-hmm. forth. Right. However, because that is the goal is to win, to yeah. get as much performance as you can. They essentially tune in the athletes to their sport and that's it. Mm-hmm. And they always say like, oh, you know, well, we're providing them an education. But when you really look down at it and you really get to see how they are actually teaching these athletes, they are pushing the athletes to get majors that are, I'm not going to say useless, but they are incredibly difficult to get a, you know, a stable career of out, uh, uh, to get a stable career out of after the fact. I mean, uh-huh. we, I, I know of, I know of one person um, was, you know, very very smart is very very smart um join a particular track team and the um the ed- academic advisors were pushing this person to go to some like really easy really really easy major and this person mm-hmm. was like no i i'm i'm going to do engineering like yeah. i know i want to do engineering and they were like you can't do engineering and you know yeah and they're pushing that easy major so they could focus more time into track yeah. exactly oh, okay. and then this person ended up you know graduating with damn near a 4.0 mm-hmm. you know doing really good in life now right and did track the whole time and it's like the fact that the bias is towards pushing the athletes towards less academic rigor uh-huh. that's like that is sinister, in my opinion. <laughs> right, right, right. And to, if you don't mind, to add on quickly to what he just said, uh, I don't even think it's just college. I, I think it comes from, like you said, you have friends that did little. Yeah, yeah. It comes from what you, these, oh, I would say old time coaches, meaning like the their mindset on to how to coach and develop. It's very like if you, oh, you don't want it enough. If you are tired, you don't want it enough. Yeah, or yeah, you're not yeah. Working yeah, hard yeah. Enough. That it's that grindy mindset. Uh-huh. It's completely toxic and it develops it does not develop strong athletes right that, oh, well. yeah no it, it it develops fake confidence mm-hmm. because you're like oh my god it, and it's like i did not grow up with that kind of coaching thank yeah. god yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but i've seen so many athletes they're working and they're dedicating and they're assuming when well if i work hard then i'm going to su- succeed yeah but those two don't always yeah, yeah, go yeah exactly. together. it does yeah. not yeah. always happen and right. so it's, I think uh, a big problem is like the, the, the coaches in the, with the younger athletes, mm-hmm. the development of the younger athletes. So when you're younger, what you're being told and how you're being developed, mm-hmm. right? Developing and training are two different things. Development yeah. is when you learn something 
and then training is when you apply what you learn. And uh-huh. that development stage is always, it's, it doesn't exist. Uh-huh. It's only training. People are just training kids, training them to be monsters, right, right, right. training them to be work, hard workers. <laughs> but they don't really yeah. know what they're doing mm-hmm. or why they're doing it. So why do you think um, track and field is such a great sport? And what sets it different from uh, other sports like football and basketball since track is such a you sport in a sense? I think track is a unique sport. Like for what you said, it is all about you. I mean, when you're in a team sport, you know, you can, you know, not have the best day, but still end up winning Mm -hmm. because you have people to, you know, pick up where you lacked off. But if you are not having a good day in track and field, yeah, (laughs) you're on, it's on your own. I mean, it's, it, it requires you to be, it requires you to like be ready when it's time. It requires you to zone in and really focus because like it's all about you, you know? And it's a lot. It's a lot of pressure and it requires you to really be able to handle that pressure. Uh-huh. And it's very clear who can and who can't. Yeah. But since since it hurts so bad, it sets you apart from other people who didn't work as hard or train as hard. Like football, you can kinda like BS because it's a team sport. You can have your other teammates pick up slack with basketball. You can kind of do the same thing or mm-hmm. you can stick to a particular role, but like track is so exposed to it. Like if you didn't work or train or you didn't, your workouts weren't as detailed or you didn't you didn't work as hard, it kind of exposes you. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it's like the strongest correlation of life, I think. So like if you want to be like the best or you want to get some more life, you've got to like put the effort in and yeah. be decent on stuff. No one's going to pick up the slack for your life. Yeah. yeah. Work like that. Yeah. That's a good way to think about yeah, it. That was yeah. Really good. And then uh, lastly, so what is uh, next for you? Where's Tyra Giddens? What's next for you as an athlete and going forward? Is there any things you want to promote? So I'm currently, like, I just finished, like, the big outline. And I, my, my agents are currently looking it over and doing a lot of editing. And I'm creating a business plan right now and how I want this to actually be a business. Because right uh, now, I just have the product. But I want it to be more than a product. I want it to be a reoccurring thing of me and you know, hopefully a group of people continuously looking for ways to better the training environment for athletes Mm -hmm. whether and coaches can come to this i guess a website or and athletes can come to gain knowledge on how to create systems to better athletes and to better coaches and all together developing ultimate athletes all right that's it all right (laughs) (laughs) all right thank y'all so much for joining me and i'll see y'all next monday